Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna be discussing DHEA and how to normalize the levels of this particular hormone. DHEA is an adaptive steroid that is produced primarily by the adrenal glands and to a lesser degree in the ovaries and the testes. It is one of the anti-stress adaptive hormones that is associated with health and youth, meaning that it is generally at its peak when you are healthier and usually younger. And although the levels of DHEA, like other adaptive steroids like testosterone, progesterone, pregnenolone, tend to decline with age, Aging is not the sole or even primary factor for low levels of DHEA. In fact, there's an increasing amount of younger people today that are running into low levels of these adaptive steroid hormones, particularly DHEA. Whereas in the past, maybe 25 plus years ago, it was only more common to see declining levels of DHEA in other adaptive steroids in people that were 45 and older. And this is actually really helpful data. It gives us a clue as to the true cause of declining levels of DHEA and other steroid hormones, which is stress. Now, really quick, I'm making this video because somebody asked me to make a video about potentially elevated levels of DHEAS or DHEA sulfate, which is basically the adrenalized version of DHEA. So it's DHEA that's converted into DHEA sulfate in the adrenal glands, usually in a response to stress and also to go down various pathways to make other hormones like estrogen or testosterone or pregnenolone or progesterone. So there's really not too much of a difference in terms of the physiological effects between DHEA and DHEA sulfate other than the pathway that it might take. For example, under the influence of hypothyroid or high estrogen, DHEA sulfate can actually turn into more estrogen or cortisol, which is one reason why in women, too high levels of DHEA, although most of the time people have low levels of DHEA, as we'll get into in a moment, but in women who tend to have more estrogen and less optimal thyroid function, that too much or just a small amount more of DHEA than what is normal for the female body can actually turn into estrogen or cortisol contributing to hormonal imbalances like estrogen dominance. So from what I see, it's usually women that are concerned about having too high levels of DHEA, although important and tend to decline with age. Keep in mind that five milligrams of DHEA is still 10 times the amount of what's normal for what the female body produces. Whereas in the male body, about 10 to 15 milligrams of DHEA is produced daily for normal physiological function. So getting back to this person's question about whether or not you should be concerned about elevated levels of DHEAS and how to lower it, let's first consider a couple of facts. The first being, which I already stated, that DHEA levels tend to decline with age, especially in old age where the body starts to produce little to no DHEA. Also keep in mind that the body doesn't need much DHEA for a male about 10 to 15 milligrams a day to function normally and to be healthy, whereas a female needs about 10 times less than that. So in terms of elevating or lowering or regulating DHEA, it's important to consider the fact whether you have a female body or a male body. But again, in general, DHEA levels tend to decline with age and stress. So it's more common that people have low levels, insufficient levels of DHEA than they do higher levels of DHEA. So a lot of the times when somebody's concerned about having elevated levels of DHEAS, what's really going on, what's giving them their negative symptoms is not necessarily that they have too much DHEA, it's that the DHEA under the influence of a hypothyroid state and high estrogen can start to take the DHEA down abnormal or unhealthy pathways where it becomes estrogen and cortisol having stressful catabolistic effects on the body rather than turning into progesterone or testosterone and having an anabolic or pro-metabolic effect. And if we take a look at this study that talks about how stress can both increase and also chronically decrease the levels of DHEA, this helps us to understand the bigger picture around DHEA and hormones in general. You see, DHEA is a major antagonist to cortisol. And this study actually talks about how even short periods of stress 
can cause a subtle spike in DHEA. So this study points out something very important to understand about your hormones and something that Hans Selye has talked about some time ago about how all hormones tend to have antagonists or opposing hormones in the body to keep a certain balance. And as this study points out, DHEAS can actually increase under stress. And this is simply because during stress, hormones like cortisol and estrogen tend to rise, as I always talk about, and what can happen in a stress response is as the stress hormones, cortisol and estrogen rise, your body will actually increase its production of the anabolic steroids like DHEA to try to buffer that stress. And this actually helps to explain a lot of the confusion around the hormonal imbalances that tend to occur in things like PCOS, hirsutism, and even hair loss, where oftentimes these conditions are blamed on elevated levels of androgens. This is also true for acne as well. And what people tend to do is try to lower their production of androgens, DHEA, testosterone, DHT, without understanding that it's not necessarily these hormones that are primarily at cause for the issues. They might be contributing to it, but they're overlooking the fact that the androgen hormones are only increasing in proportion to the stress that's occurring in the body, again, to try to buffer the effects of the stress hormones. So if you were to actually just decrease your androgen hormones, decrease your DHEA and your testosterone, you're gonna leave these stress hormones unopposed and that's gonna cause a severe hormonal imbalance and it's gonna make you more susceptible to experiencing the damaging effects of these stress hormones. So if you either intentionally try to decrease the androgens or if you're exposed to chronic stress, you're actually going to ultimately lead to a DHEA deficiency. And if we go back to the study, it actually talks about how brief or relatively minor stress can decrease DHEA levels by 35 plus percent. It also points out how eventually chronic stress will lead to a decline in DHEA levels. Meaning that in a short period of stress, you might have a subtle spike of DHEs to try to buffer the stress hormones that rise during stress. And over time, if the stress is chronic enough, you're gonna actually have a decline in DHEA levels, which explains both why DHEA levels and other androgens tend to decline with the stress of aging, but also why they decline just from chronic stress in general. So to summarize everything I'm saying here in a couple of sentences, if you're concerned about elevated levels of DHEs, what I would recommend is that first and foremost, you don't attempt to try to to intentionally lower your levels of DHEA. This is going to lead to new issues. Because first of all, you need DHEA to buffer the effects of stress and to produce other protective hormones like progesterone and testosterone and DHT. So intentionally suppressing the levels of DHEA would increase your susceptibility to stress and cause other hormonal imbalances. Also, it doesn't correct the underlying causative factors for the potentially high levels of DHEA, which is usually some sort of acute or minor stress or even a chronic stress. So this could be psychological stress, but it could also just be exercise stress would be a big cause for this, especially if you're a woman and you're experiencing so-called symptoms of elevated androgens. It's highly probable that you're engaging in cardiovascular exercise or just too intense of exercise, exercise that's too stressful. This is at least something I see very frequently. It's very common. So the type of exercise you're engaged in could be a major contributing factor, but also keep in mind, it's not necessarily just the androgens. If there's anything I want you to understand from this video, it's the various things that increase your estrogen. Various stressors will increase estrogen and estrogen will actually act on the adrenal glands by way of the pituitary gland to stimulate the overproduction of adrenal steroids and the rapid conversion of DHEA to DHEAS. So what's really going on is estrogen stimulating the adrenals to overproduce DHEA and that's what's occurring. That's what's really going wrong. It's not the DHEA, it's the stimulation of the adrenal glands and estrogen is the major thing that will stimulate the adrenal glands. And as I've talked about before, Elevated levels of estrogen can actually cut off the communication network between the pituitary and the adrenals, so the adrenals never get the message to turn off its production of adrenal steroids. So it'll overproduce things like cortisol and DHEA, and all of that excess DHEA will be turned usually into cortisol or into estrogen. So at this point, what I'm gonna recommend that you do is first and foremost, take a look at those underlying stressors that might be increasing the estrogen. If you have high levels of DHEAS, it's probably because you're chronically stressed out. It could be the way you're exercising, it could be psychological stress, 
It could also just be because you have too much estrogen in your body, and that could be caused by various things. So I'm gonna recommend that you grab our healthy weight loss course because I go into depth about the various things that increase your body's accumulation of estrogen. For example, how various phytoestrogens and xenoestrogens can impair the production of enzymes in the liver that destroy estrogen, causing it to accumulate. So these are important things to learn about and to understand if you ever want to correct the chronic hormonal imbalances in your body. So definitely check out that course for more information on how to lower estrogen levels or optimize the hormonal balance in the body. The other thing to keep in mind, as I've already touched on many times, is that this tends to occur, this hormonal imbalance tends to occur most frequently under hypothyroid states. And this is because you actually need the thyroid hormone to properly convert DHEA into progesterone, into testosterone, into DHT. So if you have elevated levels of DHEA and it's not because of some sort of stress, it could be that your hypothyroid, which is causing the DHEA to, instead of convert to these other hormones, to stay elevated and then to turn into estrogen. Not to mention that because the thyroid tends to regulate estrogen, if the thyroid's low, your estrogen levels are probably high. So hopefully this answers your questions about DHEA and whether or not you should lower elevated levels of it. If you do have elevated levels of DHEs, which is less common because more people have declining levels of it from chronic stress, but if it is elevated, keep in mind that this is usually just because there's some sort of stress that's overstimulating the adrenal glands and causing hyperadrenalism. So if you are experiencing elevated levels of DHEs, then what you're gonna want to do is not suppress the DHEA. You're gonna wanna get a handle on the underlying root cause, which is the stress. Big places to look at in your life, again, would be the way you're exercising. If you do cardio exercise, if you go for a daily run, especially if you're doing fasted exercises, all these things are gonna dramatically increase the overproduction of DHEA by way of the adrenal glands. But again, as that study pointed out, that I mentioned earlier, any sort of acute stress can cause this. So you're gonna to wanna to look at all the potential various stressors in your life. If you want more help as to how to do that and some hints and clues as to the potential major areas of stress in your life and how to handle them, again, be sure to grab the Healthy Weight Loss course, which is ultimately a course on metabolic health and balancing the hormones in your body. Healthy weight loss or healthy weight gain is just one positive benefit or side effect of balancing the hormones. So that'd be an incredible resource I would highly recommend. Otherwise, simple and pragmatical things you can do now would be to look into how to lower estrogen. We have tons of videos here on the channel that will teach you how to lower estrogen. Also take a look at herbs for lowering cortisol. A lot of the herbs that will lower cortisol will generally just have an adaptogenic effect on the adrenal system, the HPA axis, and that could help prevent the overproduction of DHEA and other adrenal steroids. So I'd probably take a look at supplementing with various adaptogen herbs like ashwagandha, which regulates the HPA axis. Otherwise, watch all of our videos we have here on the YouTube channel on getting a handle on stress. And between those videos and the Healthy Weight Loss course, you should be well on your way to achieving a more optimal hormonal balance. However, that does bring this video to a close. If you've enjoyed it and found it helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't yet already. And of course, if you're interested in learning more or checking out any of the studies I mentioned throughout this video or for supplementing with any of the herbs I mentioned or enrolling in or learning more about the Healthy Weight Loss course, you can find all of these resources and information in the description box below.